All right, you guys, walking out of Costco. We spent $200 on a month's worth of frozen mango, peanut butter, maple syrup, just basic things that we need. And unfortunately, we've got another hurricane coming. So yes, we are stocking up. Sweetie, why are you chewing your feet? <laughs> are you so happy? Yeah. So it is Sunday afternoon and because conditions are not improving with now Hurricane Milton, we are actually going to be leaving. We'll be evacuating tomorrow, Monday. We were going to leave Tuesday, but it sounds like that's everybody's plan and we do not want to get stuck in traffic on our way three hour drive up to Orlando. So I'm packing supplements, skincare, just going heavy with the snacks, just because I don't know if we'll be there for the four nights we have planned or if we'll actually end up being there longer like happened with Ian. But at the same time, I don't wanna like overpack either because packing is my worst nightmare. So I'm in survival mode right now, trying to leave my emotions out of things so I don't get extra worked up and stressed and anxious. Been there, done that. So this is just simply operation mode. Here are my little supplement containers with my probiotics and um, prenatals. I pack just like my daily dose of what I need in this little one that I keep in my purse. Also gonna pack our liquid vitamins, B12, D3, Kids Omega. I'll pack a bottle of our Omegas. The IO1, fantastic. This is the one that keeps our immune in check. A pack a grip of dates, peaceful tea. We've got go macro bars, a ton of scout bars, pancakes. I'm also gonna bake some muffins, dark chocolate, just the essentials. Um, sunflower seeds. I just made this awesome mix here. So we've got sprouted almonds, sprouted walnuts, sunflower seeds, goji berries black mulberries. This is like the best of all of the dried fruits and nuts and seeds for everything. Iron, vitamin A, vitamin E, zinc, omega-3s, good stuff. We can't leave without our complement essential. The question is, are we going to have a mini fridge? I requested one, we'll see but I would like to be able to bring all of these things. The latest prediction is that our area is going to get the storm surge. So thankfully we haven't heard anything above six feet and we are at nine feet elevation. So my hopes and prayers are that it's not at all, but at least not six foot. I'll show you what we're eating for dinner. I did just pretty much make a stew with everything in the refrigerator that needed to go. So we've got onion, garlic, carrot, celery, sweet potatoes, cauliflower, mushrooms, tomatoes, red lentils, veggie broth, salt, pepper, a little touch of curry powder. I don't know if we'll bring it with us tomorrow and bring the pot. Our friends that we're gonna be with at the hotel we're staying at did bring electric cooktops. So she's like, just bring a pot or pan if you do wanna cook and you can use ours. We should be in, also in good company with having some friends there for support. And she's got kids, so. Also, another fun situation going on. So my dad was sick as a dog the whole time we were back in Nebraska. None of us caught it, but I feel like flying maybe threw us all off and Max came down with a fever last night. He's kind of recovering now, but he's got a little bit of a cough. Dusty has it now. All of that being said, it's not a good time to be down and out as we are trying to prep our house. What I'm trying to wrap my mind around is finishing up packing, meal prep, and just getting on the road early tomorrow, Monday, so that we don't get stuck in traffic. Um, it's supposed to make landfall on Wednesday, I think midday. So we should be good to go if we leave early tomorrow. Good morning, you guys. So today is officially evacuation day. We are getting in our last smoothies we're pretty much gonna say we're willing to sacrifice you know if the couch gets ruined whatever furniture but we're just stacking what we can we got everything up on the counters i got a surfboard on some sawhorses with things like our clothes furniture you know 
it's not much I can do to get it up off the ground by myself. But for the most part, we got all of our clothes and our precious belongings off the ground. More clothes. <sighs> Just doing whatever we can, I guess, to <clears throat> get things off the ground. Let's say we get an inch or two of water will save a lot of things just simply by putting them up. So we'll see. We are on the road about an hour out from Orlando. Seems that we are not the only ones making this decision, which gives us a little bit of peace of mind that hopefully it's an okay decision, even though pretty much the entire peninsula of Florida is in the cone of danger here. But you can see by the looks of it, there are cars even driving on the shoulder. So, so it's like five lanes of traffic, which thankfully has kept us from sitting at a standstill for too long. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be at an Airbnb tonight and then the rest of the time at a Disney hotel. I would rather be, instead of in some obscure Airbnb all by myself, south where there's still a threat of flooding it and tornadoes like, and, and all tornadoes that. i'd rather be in like a place with really good infrastructure so we've got friends going to disney we're like well, let's go to disney best case scenario we we can see some parks worst case we'll at least have power water food i i think we'll be safe even entertainment we'll for the kids indoors wish us luck and i hate to say it but i've already made peace with possibly coming home to a flooded house, but in my gut, I still remain hopeful and optimistic that that won't be the case. Yeah. Either way, we have each other. Why are hotels so fun, you guys? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, what do we got cooking over here? And our PFOA, PFAS, PFTE free electric pan. We've got some oats with bananas, a little titch of soy milk, <laughs> and we're gonna put some Sun Warrior in also. This is not a bad idea, and it was like $35 and we can cook. We know that the hotels are gonna have power, so we're like, we can cook, I can make pasta, I can make oatmeal, we can make a soup in this thing. I don't know why we never owned one of these before. This is it's nice. nice. We are attempting to make lemonade with the lemons we've been given. Wave, Biff. Wave at mom. Max. We are here at Art of Animation. Max, what do you think? It's all Finding Nemo under the sea? Yeah. How lucky. Do you love it? Oh, and we even get a view of the cool pool out there. It's so bubbly and happy in here, isn't it? This is another bed right here. Gosh. Good morning, you guys, from Disney World. So Dusty picked this up at Walmart. It has come in very handy. It is non-tox. It's ceramic coated. We are making pancakes. I'm attempting a Minnie or Mickey Mouse for the kids. I'm gonna do a couple more. This is the test round. Well, would you look at that? Mickey Mouse 
got all of our goods up here. We bring these individuals to give the kids or if we're starting to feel a little drained, we'll take extras outside of our compliment. Starting my morning with my compliment essential. Big shout out to Compliment. We have been longtime fans of theirs for making it incredibly easy to be a plant-based eater and get your nutrition in one place without the overkill. There are always critical nutrients that regardless of what you're eating, you want to make sure you're getting more of just to play it safe. So I love that Compliment includes the eight critical nutrients that are extra important to plant-based eaters. If you guys are interested in checking out Compliment, there is a special 15% off discount code linked below for you in the description. Also be sure to check out Plantapalooza going on this month. So it's an online eight day wellness event with dozens of incredible speakers all centered around achieving optimal energy levels. And we are also one of the guest speakers, so we are extra enthusiastic about this special online event. So be sure to check that out, linked below as well. <laughs> oh. Okay guys, hurricane update. I've got a whole bunch of gas on the back of the car. Looks like I'm housing a dead body under here. And just a mess back here. Trader Joe's was the only grocery store open. We've got a bunch of food. I'm gonna make some pasta tonight in the hotel room. I got zucchini and mushrooms and all the things. Having fun, we're making the best of it. So praying, seriously praying, actually praying like so much in my sleep, on my drives, on my walks, just for people's protection first and foremost. And then for the protection of their, you know, their assets, their homes. And just praying that this is the last one of the season and that this is the last big one for a long time. So anyway. Wednesday midday, it's about noon in Orlando. I guess the storm won't really pass through here today. It's gonna be tomorrow morning. Back on the coast, it's gonna make landfall like basically at midnight tonight, so. It's a little nerve wracking to not really be able to see what's going on. Just made myself a little green, super thick smoothie. It tastes actually super good. Hotel room pasta coming right up. Zozo, what do you think, girl? It's raining outside, but no big storms yet. Okay, you guys, it is almost 10 p.m. We are in the room. I just ran out to the car a little bit ago to get some water and it was intense. The wind was blowing like crazy. I was soaked and we were like, wow, this is really happening. So of course got to the room, had an argument as Aaron is freaking out and I'm freaking out and we're just like, what's gonna happen? Um, so far, so good it sounds like, at least with our neighborhood and our friends, uh, every, everybody we've heard from and contacted is good it the hurricane has made landfall on the west coast i can see that we lost power i get an email when our uh security system goes out it emails us that looked like it happened at 8 36. um so that was probably right at landfall i think again i wish i could look at the cameras that you know our doorbell camera and see uh, how much water there is out there but our dog sitter kelly said that we're good and she's she's just a few minutes away from our house so hoping and praying that that's the case. I was telling my mom on the phone, like I'm walking to the car and it's getting intense and I'm like saying a prayer and I'm like, God, just don't let our house flood. And I'm like, but I feel bad saying that because it's like, I don't want it to go somewhere else. I don't want someone else's house to flood instead of ours. It's just a, overall, it's just a bad, scary situation and frustrating and, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it is part of life and I also was just like, you know, your will be done. And I know that when hard things happen, it ultimately makes me a better man. It makes me a better person. And 
So if that's what you've got in store for us, then I trust you. And so hopefully, again, we don't know what we're gonna go home to. We, it's still very early. The hurricane is still on its way towards us. It'll probably hit, we'll all be asleep. Again, we're over here in Orlando. We're very much still in the cone, but we're very safe here at the resort. It made landfall as a cat three. It was a very powerful one, yeah. but it should be reduced to about a one by the time it reaches us. I took the kids down to the lobby for some entertainment to kind of free our minds a little bit. Yeah. That turned into me having a little mini panic attack. It was just like way sensory overload. It was yeah. chaos and I was just like, should we all be like freaked out right now or like taking this seriously or yeah. maybe it was just me, I don't know. But for now, we're probably just gonna lay down and get some rest. I think our minds are very extremely weary right now. So right. we'll we'll keep you guys posted in the morning with yep. what we find out about our community. I will say also the one thing about these <laughs> situations, this one and Hurricane Ian both really truly have kind of strengthened our bonds with some of our friends and our yeah. community here in Florida. Right. It just feels so much like, wow, I've opened up emotionally to these people who maybe I have never done with some of my other friends who I've considered even closer right. back home. And so it really truly sometimes does take these kind of scary situations for God to, again, like yeah. strengthen you, strengthen your bonds with others and right. just leaning on each other, leaning on him. So that's I think kind something... of been a little bit of a silver lining is I think it's allowed me to be a little bit more vulnerable and open with people. I think something that we've noticed as a couple together, like when we left, you like helped me with this. Aaron's like, I, I don't care about our stuff. I just, I don't care about our stuff. And I'm like, that's the biggest form of like faith and, and just the best thing in life is when you're able to disconnect and surrender. And I just saw a post on Instagram I had just shared and it was like, Daniel slept in the lion's den, Paul slept in prison, Jesus slept on the boat during the storm. It's like, if you can, you can rest in, in the worst of the storms and the hardest of times because you've got peace in your heart. And, and that means you care less about the things and you take care of the people and and yeah so when i had that we're learning things about life here mm -hmm. as as sucky as it is it's mm -hmm. i'm weirdly thankful for these experiences so i feel like when i had that moment of panic and i kind of lost it for a few minutes i immediately thought of that story in the bible when peter sees jesus walking on the water and jesus says come to me and he does and he's walking on the water but then he takes his focus off of Jesus, AKA loses his faith and begins to sink and Jesus right. pulls him back out. And I feel like I had surrendered truly to just being like, I don't yeah. care so much about our stuff. It's more so the burden of having to deal with the stuff. Right. Um, and anyway, so then when I had that moment of freaking out, I felt like I was losing my focus and I got rattled a little bit. And I began to have that sinking feeling. And then I think you kind of pulled me up, so to speak. And you're like, you just need to get re-centered, like have a heart to heart with God, go take a shower, get quiet and just, mm -hmm. just chill out for a minute. And, and I think that helped. Yeah. It's like a testing, right? It's like a testing of our faith. You know, it's like, yeah, we're, we're, we're good people. We're happy people when everything is going right. But you know, God, and I'm not saying God tests us, but he, you know, he puts challenging things in our lives to show us what we're capable of. And so maybe that's one of these moments where he's like, no, I'm not putting you through this because I want to test you. I'm putting you through this because I want to see what I want you to see what you're made of. And, and so I, again, like I said earlier, I, yeah, you're right. And I think that this is ultimately good. These things happen for a reason. Uh, as hard as they are, they bring us together and they strengthen our faith and... <laughs> people and ourselves so we'll and keep one, you posted one more thing i just posted on my stories after the fact so i gave this little recap about how i freaked out and then i right after that i'm showing this funny cute video of little miss lego hair okay. <laughs> i realized you know i was actually a lot more unhinged before having kids right so i have moments here and there but i was definitely a lot worse before they just 
they, they bring take so, your focus. Yeah, it's like I could be freaking out one minute, and the next minute she does a hilarious toot, and I'm just yeah. barrel like laughing so hard. The so. kids are a major gift because they're a healthy distraction and a healthy focus they from take, away from our craziness. Yeah, and as much as we want them to see that, yes, we are not superhuman. We are in fact human, and we do have moments of weakness. We do also have to step our game up a lot more often to show them our strong and brave side. Um, and so sometimes you do have to do that, kind of fake it till you make it, and mm -hmm. it ends up actually making you stronger. Right. Some access to the barrier island of Boca Grande in a helicopter with the lead county sheriff. From the sky, the damage was clear. You can see that water forced right through here. Look at this. Oh my God. Wow. The only bridge to Boca Grande was closed, blocking access to the barrier island after it was hit with a five-foot storm surge. Lee County Sheriff Carmine Marcino. And I've heard reports today uh, coming back that Boca Grande got hit very hard with Hurricane Nelson. Homes surrounded by brown water, cars swept away, businesses caked in sand. I mean, this is evidence of just how powerful of a storm surge we are talking about. Check out this road. It's washed out that building, barely hanging on by a thread. And over here, you'll notice that part of the asphalt here has literally buckled under the pressure of all that water. These sandbags weren't enough to protect this shop. The, the water, four or five feet up. Nearly everyone on this island evacuated. And Sheriff Marcino thinks that saved their lives. It looks like a, a nor'easter storm from like up north but it's sand. I've never seen it or would imagine it would look like this. Businesses closed, waters busted through the windows, trash and debris, boats, furniture. I mean, this just shows you it's pure devastation. If you took a picture, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. This leaves me at a loss of words. So you guys, we just got home. I'm just so thankful that there was no water damage in our house. We like literally tried to elevate everything just in case. I just blasted the air doctor. All of the windows are like covered in, I'm thinking salt water. It must be salt water because they're all like really foggy. And like so many of our plants are like wind burned and browning and dead. I don't know. It must be the salt. But we're just so relieved. So thankful. You are already in your swimsuit? Yeah, I'm not going to... Took the surfboard it. off the living room wall and put all of our clothes on it. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a lot. But this is definitely best case scenario. We got lucky. Feeling a little worn down, so we're making the same sick soup that we left home with. And it was so good, just what we needed. And we were all feeling stressed and just drained emotionally, mentally, and physically. Kind of feeling the same now, so it's a good way to get home. Good morning, you guys. We are home and slightly overwhelmed. I'm out here picking up branches and power washing the house, the windows. The whole house is covered in a sticky, oily, salt water film. Like we said before, it's just a reminder that, that life has its ups and downs. And you gotta keep on keeping on. So this video is a little bit out of the norm, but we just wanted to bring you guys with us and on our real life and show you what's going on in our lives and that it's not always perfect. It's not always awesome. And it's sometimes very hard actually, very stressful. So that being said, there's so much love in the community. We've got more friends than we ever imagined we would have. And we sometimes forget, we're like, oh my gosh, we need to move back home where we have friends. And then the whole time we're gone, we're getting texts from people, neighbors and friends that we have made here. And we're like, gosh, you know, what really matters the most is people, right? So it brings us back to like our mission for this channel. You know, we want to help people. We want to help you guys or anyone and everyone just be their best version of themselves, the happiest, healthiest they can be, because that's truly, you know, what's important in life, not houses, not clothes, you know, not all the things that we were so worried about losing um, in this last hurricane, but it's just each other and people and health and wellness and happiness. So anyway, we've got a lot to be thankful for and uh, so we're just gonna stay focused on that. Keep on keeping on.